This week on the Running Report Show, Ward Athletics announces their Athletes of the Year's finalists and NCAA Cross Country Championships men's and women's preview. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Running Report Show on Fan Hub TF. I'm Joshua Paz, Mr. Possible, here to give you running news produced for and by the culture. And this week, we are going to preview the NCAA Cross Country Championships going down this weekend on ESPN, ESPNU at 7 a.m. in Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's going to be exciting. First, we're going to go over the women's race with Sam Ferris, a 2022 Magic Boost member. She's been doing that at the University of Oregon, covering the sports there and everything like that. She's going to go over cross country with us. And then at the end of the show, I'm going to preview my thoughts of the men's cross country championship but without further ado let's go bring it in with sam right now and preview this championship right i know you have to be like just geeks for ncaa cross country championships coming this saturday absolutely i mean i grew up running so this is my bread and butter i cannot be more excited about it and there is some i think there's some cutthroat competition out there and there could be some upsets coming up this weekend upsets ups because we preview in the women's race like upsets i wasn't thinking about upsets when it comes to women's race because let's start off my first point right here my first topic about the women's nc state back to back that's what i'm really feeling like caitlin tui and kelsey chime Ch Ch Kelsey Camille like that one two punch they've been battling since NXN and now they're on the same team like I feel like it's a done deal that's gonna be back to back do you feel the same way Sam listen okay Caitlin will most likely place first odds are in her favor she's undefeated this season I mean her coach Laura Hennis has been with NC State as head coach since 06 15 years before then she was a part of the coaching staff and even ran there so I mean odds are stacked for an NC State. Like, they've yeah, got yeah. it in the book. But I don't know. I think Wisconsin's a team to look out for. Arkansas is always competitive. Uh -huh. And Stanford held it down against an extremely competitive Western region this year. And I think that we got to keep our eyes open for the possibility of NC State to not repeat in back-to-back -back years just because there is such a wide range of talent at this level this year. Well, you do have some good points. Like you didn't, you brought up Wisconsin and Stanford and all these other teams, and you didn't even mention like New Mexico. So you're like all these other talents, and like their hardest talent and the hardest battle gotta be was gotta be New Mexico. Do you feel like New Mexico? Would you put like those other teams ahead of New Mexico being that team to beat? That that could be NC State or is New Mexico or is these other teams the other ones gonna beat them? I I put them right there with them. I mean, New Mexico State in New Mexico, have, they've been contenders. I, I think New Mexico and NC State have the backing, they have the belief that they yeah. can win this. And I'm worried that that might get into their heads that it's a it's a done deal, that they're, they're supposed to win, they should win. Those two teams have been favored throughout the season. I mean, NC State barely dropped from first in their region all season long. So why why should someone else come and beat them? But I think in cross country, if one of your teammates has a bad day, your whole team's performance can crumble. So I think it, we can't be sure that NC State or New Mexico will walk away with this win without someone vying for first place ahead of them. Yeah, you have some good points, and especially like with NC State, they're so like they're so dependent on that one-two punch of Kelsey and Caitlin up there in the front. Like they need their top five to be in their top 30. If their number five like falls way back in Nevada Moreno, they could have you never know what could happen at the end of the day. And still speaking on Caitlin too, you meant she has a good chance to go win this NCAA championship, the dominance rolling over from high school finally. But Parker Valby of Florida has been on a roll this season, undefeated, has been running phenomenal 8, 6K times, all like in the 18s throughout this season. Can Caitlin Tui lose this race? That's what I'm asking. I, I definitely think she can. I mean, as someone that ran growing up, you have off days. And if your off day falls on the NCAA championship day, then it just does. And it's it sucks and it's unfortunate, but Caitlin Tui has put in the work. She's done the work, deserves to win this. 
but it could be an off day and Parker Bowlby has done the work too. She has had the phenomenal season undefeated all season long, the two of them. And so it's, it's hard to give one individual the leg up over them. So I would say it, it should be the two of them going one and two. Like it is hard to put anyone ahead of yeah. them, but there are the, this, they can be slide. They got Olivia Howell from Illinois rapidly improved over the season. And Laura Pelicorlo out of Portland. I mean, she she snuck in there towards the end and had an incredible performance at Western Regional. Like it is it is hard to give Kaylin Tui and Parker Valby the absolute first and second place between mm-hmm. the two of them. I am confident they will get top five, if not top three. But I, I don't think you can guarantee them going one and two for sure this weekend. Yeah, and you didn't even mention like Mercy Chellingot. Like she won NCAAs in that 2020 in the 2021, like the COVID type up back in March. And like she's been dominant throughout. Like she's not like she, you know, and she and she races Parker Volby all the time and everything yeah. in, in that SEC. So that's somebody that definitely cannot count out. And before I get you out of here, I'm just curious about any other storylines that you may be interested in because I was thinking too, like, we are on Stillwater, we're in Oklahoma, like those those Oklahoma State girls, OK State with Taylor Rowe, Natalie Cook, that one two punch could possibly do some damage and maybe affect the team race or individually. Absolutely. I mean, OK State finished first in the Midwest and they had an incredible season. I, I grew up in Austin, Texas and admitting that <laughs> Oklahoma State as well hurts my heart a bit, but they absolutely could come in and upset some of those top 10, top 20 rankings. So we got to Keep an eye out for the Oklahoma State girls, but I think there are other teams that have shown improvement throughout the season or that have fallen off we might need to pay attention to. Rice fell from second to ninth in South Central at the regional finals, and Columbia started the season ranked 10th in preseason polls, but shot up there. I mean, they had incredible improvement and had an impressive, impressive performance at regionals this season. I think we got to keep an eye out for LSU and UVA. They didn't go into this season ranked very high, had some difficulties performing well week to week, but I mean, I think they are, they're contenders for top spots when it comes to looking at the top five teams that finish or the top 10 teams that finish. I think, I think we'll be very entertained when we get to tune into the NCAA champs this year. And we're definitely going to be watching this Saturday, 7 a.m. ESPNU. The women's race goes off the 6K. Man, Sam, I'm, I'm hyped. Can it just be Saturday already? Like it's Christmas. I know. Really I'm ready. I'm ready. I'll be tuning in real early. I'm glad I'm in Central Time Zone where we are in Oklahoma. And so <laughs> I don't got to get up too early, but it'll be good. Appreciate you so much for coming on. We definitely got to talk about it. the NCAA Cross Country Championships again. Appreciate it. Moving to the professional side of things, the World Athletics has announced their finalists for the Female and Male Athlete of the Year. First on the female side, we have Sydney McLaughlin, the greatest 400 meter hurdler of all time. Shelly Ann Fraser Price, I would say the greatest woman 100 meter runner of all time. Toby Amusan, the 100 meter hurdle world record holder. Yui Mar Rojas, the world indoor and outdoor triple jump champion. And she improved her world record this, her indoor world record in Belgrade this year as well and also Kimberly Garcia of Peru who dominated the race walk this year won the world 20k race walk and the world 35k race walk in Eugene this summer honestly when I'm looking at this list I think I even said this before about three weeks ago man it goes to Shelly Ann Fraser Price man it's her it's Shelly Ann Fraser Price she cemented this year being the greatest woman and 100 meter runner of all time she ran sub sub 10 7 seven times that totals for nine times total in her career the next person with the most of that is elaine thompson with four she's done it nine different times and all those times are in the top 20 of all time but we'll find out december 5th if she does end up being that female athlete of the year but it's also just a shame too i don't know how faith could be not in this you feel me faith could be should be on this like the same way that shelly has dominated 
Faith Kibiegon has dominated and like her rankings and everything, she should be in this top five. I, I really do believe that. Ford Athletics also announced their Male Athlete of the Year finalist. Their top five is Noah Lyles, who moved up to number three all time in 200 meter list and won the World 200 meter championship. Marlon Duplantis, who just was dominant this season, had the world record in the pole vault outdoors and indoors and an all time pole vault, did that outdoors and won the pole vault world championship indoors and outdoors as well. Jacob Ingerbrigsten, who won the 5,000 meter championship outdoors. Eli Kipchoge won two marathon majors and broke his own world record in the marathon. Then Sulefai and Elba Kali, who went out there, was dominant in the 3,000 meter steeplechase this year and won the world 3,000 meter steeplechase as well in that process. But I wanna know, who do you guys think is the male athlete of the year? Also tell me who you think is the female athlete of the year. But honestly, the female, gotta be Shelly Ann Fraser Price. Male, gotta be Mono Duplantis. He has the seventh height, seven highest heights ever indoor and outdoors and the highest height ever that he did he got that outdoors that's crazy indoors easier he did it outdoors with the wind all that rain everything anything can happen and he did a backflip afterwards so it just needs to be Mon it needs to be Shelly Ann it needs to be Mondo and then we can finally just have a race to see who like who's the who's the one they already won a race Shelly won a race Mondo Mondo won a race Shelly so I um, ran the 100 meter a few times in high school. Two in times, what? Huh? 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. That's yeah. five years ago. And I'm a lot faster than five years ago. <laughs> wanna bet? I would wanna bet a lot. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good. <laughs> if you want, next year we put a 100 meter. <laughs> we do, yeah, next year just Brussels, me against Shelly Ann. Just like this, 100 meter. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so after they get named in the December 5th Male and Female Athlete of the Year, let's put them on a track right now. Let's see who is the fastest. And then I, it's 2022. Why do we got to do male and female? It should just be straight up. Just like in the NBA, we just got one MVP. Come on. Let's just go Just go Athlete of the Year. So let's let's line up Mono Duplantis, Shelly Ann Frazier-Price, 100 meter dash. Let's see what happens. Whoever does that wins it. It's Athlete of the Year. I think that's pretty fast to me. Pretty Pretty fair. Lastly on the running report, let's end it with the NCAA Championship Men's Preview and it's going to be super duper exciting. For the previous years, NAU has dominated. They've won five of the past six championships at the NCAA Cross Country Championships. But like, honestly, this year, it doesn't look the same. Let me tell you, I'm an NAU stan. Like, believe me, I'm, I'm a lumberjack. I, re I really am. My brother went there and everything like that. Like, I, I'm a journalist. I'm, I'm being a journalist right now. I'm being my bias. My bias is going out the win window right now because Stanford, Oklahoma State, t t Tulsa, BYU are all looking like contenders that are going to take the NAU down, especially Stanford and BYU. That contingent that Stanford has, probably some, I've seen them race at Pac-12s. Some of the best running like that I've ever seen from cross country runners with the likes of Charles Hicks, Kai Robinson, Cole Sprout, Thomas Boyden, and then Makaya Badeau Rousseau, like what he is doing as well and how he's adding on to this team is gonna be super duper special. BYU with Casey Klinger and Aiden Troutner and then all the guys, Creed Thompson, everybody that they got on their team is looking deadly and I honestly feel that BYU is looking the favorite that can out, outlast Stanford. But for, uh, sadly this year, it doesn't look like NAU is gonna hold this up. Let me know what you guys think on that end as well. And it's gonna be super interesting too because Tulsa and OK, OK State, they're the guys that are closest to this course, Oklahoma State being their home course as well. And they tied at their regional meet in that 49 to 49. And I think that goes right into individually because Oklahoma State are gonna be looking at contenders really to get that individual title as well. Because going into individual title, that's gonna be on their home course. Alex Mayer, who was second place in the 10,000 meters outdoors, won the Cowboy Jamboree on this course earlier this year. And then Isai Rodriguez, Isai Rodriguez is running great now. Isai Rodriguez was in a car, right, car accident and everything like that. So he's starting now to really get back into the And then at the regional meet, he went out there and won. He won the meet. I know he was kind of saying that they're kind of just taking it slow and just going out there and not just really filling it out. That's what his coach was telling him. But, but for him to get a victory at this time of the year shows that he's definitely looking out for that individual title. Nico Young though, 
I, I feel like he's the class of the field. Nico Young, Charles Hicks, Kai Robinson, Casey Klinger, Victor Kiprop. There's a lot of people that can win this race, but it just comes down to who's gonna be best on that day. For me, I'm really looking at Nico Young, Charles Hicks, and Casey Klinger. Those guys are my three that are looking, that I feel like are gonna round up the top three. They have looked the best consistently throughout the year, especially Nico, Casey, Oh, all of them, not I mean especially any of them. All of them have looked great and consistent throughout the entire year. But the guy like Alex Mayer, who won the Cowboy Jamboree, second to Dylan Jacobs in the 10,000 meters outdoors at the NCAA Championships, somebody who knows this course like the back of his hand, I have to think, is gonna be somebody that is a definitely a top contender individually. And I cannot dismiss Dylan Jacobs, who's now at Tennessee, still being at the same coach that he had, at Notre Dame, but now being at now being at Tennessee, he's definitely somebody that can go out and win that individually. He won the 10,000 meters outdoors, you feel me? So he's definitely looking at somebody that can win that championship. But the men's race overall is going to be interesting. Let me know what you guys think about NCAAs. We're super excited to watch it. We're super excited to talk about it next week as well. Back on the Running Report show, same time, same day, on Wednesday with Sam, Fer Sam Ferris coming back with us to talk to the women's side and everything like that. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode make sure to check out the fan hub tf for more track and field and running content and we'll catch you next week let's get it